video on solving rational equations. Hopefully you already know how to solve um, one step and two step and multi step equations. The only step that we're going to add into this type of solving is that we must have a common denominator in order to add these two rational expressions together and then we can solve it. So notice we have three different denominators here and the strategy that I like to use is to make all of the denominators the same on the left side and on the right side. Now, I will show you an example where that might not be the best idea. But for now, let's make our common denominator in x cubed. So on this first fraction, I would multiply it by x squared over x squared. The second, I'd multiply by x over x. And then the third fraction already has that denominator of x cubed. So now let's combine our expression, so we get x squared plus 2x over x cubed equals 3 over x cubed. Now notice, since we have two fractions that are equal and their denominators are equal, we know that their numerators must be equal. So I'm going to pretty much ignore those denominators and I'm just going to say x squared plus 2x must equal the 3, right? Those are the numerators being set equal to each other. And now you'll see that we have a quadratic to solve. So I'm going to set that equal to 0. And I'm going to try to factor this. Let's see, is it factorable? Uh, let's try 3 and 1. Make that a positive 3 and a negative 1, and we're in business. So I get x can be negative 3 and x can be positive 1. Now instead of doing a check and actually seeing if any of these answers are extraneous, what I like to do is look back at the original problem and make a note of its restrictions. So notice that the only restriction in the beginning of the problem was that x can't be 0. That means that if you actually did get x equals 0 as one of your solutions, you know it would be extraneous. Since we didn't, we know that these answers must actually be valid solutions. Let's try the other example. For our second, second example, I think it's better that we don't actually make a common denominator for this one. I actually want to cross multiply. So I would get 30x minus 30 equals 5x squared minus 5. And here I have this quadratic. I'm going to set that equal to 0. So 5x squared minus 30x plus 25 equals 0. And let's try to factor this. So notice the first um, nice thing about it is that we have a GCF of 5. So I'm going to factor out a 5 first. And now this quadratic is much easier to factor. So I think this is x minus 5, x minus 1. Yeah, that works. So we get two solutions. We have x equals 5 and x equals 1. However, as I said before, you always want to go back to the beginning and check your restrictions. So on our first fraction, notice that x is not allowed to be 1. And in our second fraction, x can't be 1 or negative 1. So if we get those as solutions, we know that they're actually not solutions, they're extraneous. So I'm going to have to cross out our x equals 1. That's an extraneous solution. So we only have one solution of x equals 5. All right, so here's an example where our denominators don't seem to match at all. But before I actually consider what the lowest common denominator is, I should probably factor this one. So let's factor out an x. That leaves me with x minus 3. Now I can see that they actually do share a common factor of x. So for my, again, lowest common denominator, I always like it to be the lowest, so there's less reducing to do later. I want to make these match. So 
Um, let's say that all the denominators should have a factor of x. So this, this one's missing it, so I'll multiply it by x over x. They should all have a factor of 2. These two are both missing that. And they should all have a factor of x minus 3. And I'll give it to the first and the last. All right. Here we go. So my first fraction became x minus 3 over 2x times x minus 3. My second is now 2x over 2x times x minus 3. And my third is now a 4x times x minus 3 over 2x times x minus 3. Now don't go canceling out these x minus 3's. Obviously they would cancel, but that's not the point. The point is so that we have a common denominator here. And now if I combine these, we get x minus 3 plus 2x over 2x times x minus 3. And let's see, I'll distribute my 4x. So I get 4x squared minus 12x over 2x times x minus 3. Now we have two fractions that are equal, so their denominators are the same, meaning that their numerators must be the same. So this becomes 3x minus 3 equals 4x squared minus 12x. We have a quadratic, so I'm going to set that equal to 0. I just subtracted 3x on both sides and added 3 to both sides. And let's see, we could try factoring this. I, I don't think this one actually is going to factor. So now we're left to use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to squeeze that in over here. So x equals negative b, so 15, plus or minus the square root of negative 15 squared minus 4 times 4 times 3, all over 2 times 4. Get my calculator. So inside that root, I have 177. And again, I don't want to check these solutions, so I'm just going to look back at the original problem and make a note of what my, my restrictions were. So the first thing I knew that was that x can't be 0, and it couldn't be 3. So those are the only two discontinuities, right? only two gaps in the domain which means that these two answers are perfectly valid.